out how this cute Alaskan town celebrates Independence Day. Full of fun, grit, and Alaskan spirit, the 4th of July celebrations here are unlike any we've ever seen before. That's because Seward, Alaska is uniquely positioned to put on quite an unusual extravaganza. Not everyone has a majestic mountain on one doorstep, waters teeming with fish on the other, and a marina full of vessels captained by delightful people. We get to experience this fun event with two surprise guests, and we're bringing you along too. Come with us and experience the 4th of July Seward, Alaska style. So you've seen Seward in the wintertime, quiet, covered in snow. Well, prepare to see a different version of this small coastal town. Very different. We're headed there now and we can't believe how transformed it is. The mountains are lush and green, just patches of that thick snow cover remain. Town is filling up fast as more and more folks arrive for this famous holiday weekend. And the RV parks are full. Word to the wise, coming to Seward for the 4th requires booking way in advance, no matter where you're staying in town. Lucky for us, we know a beautiful and free spot right on the outskirts of town. It's a full bus. We are joined by our nephew Anthony and our friend Dave, here to adventure with us for a bit. We are ready and super excited to dive in for our first day of festivities. Starting with a whole string of goofy events, like the slow bike race. The aim of this race is not to cross the finish line first, but rather last. Contestants pedal as slowly as possible without losing their balance, shooting to be the last one to cross the finish line. You know you have some skilled cyclists in town when you can see this much control and balance. Surrounded by laughter and cheers, it's quite a hoot to watch. Next up, it gets even goofier. This is the fish toss. And if you're wondering what the heck a fish toss is, we are wondering that as well. So it goes like this. You partner up with a buddy and together you get one fish. Now all the teams line up in the streets, teammates facing one another. As you can imagine, it gets a little chaotic as everyone finds a partner, gets their fish, and finds their spot in formation. The buzz of excitement is palpable. And now the fish toss starts. So the aim is to not drop the fish. You toss the fish, then take a step back, toss again, take a step back. If you drop the fish, you're out of the competition. As the distance gets wider, catching that slippery fish without dropping it gets tougher. The last team standing with an undropped fish wins. This hilarious event is a testament to Seward's sense of humor and community spirit. And if you're thinking it can't possibly get goofier than the fish toss, then wait for the grease pole. It is exactly as it sounds. Remember, you can do teams of three, three people to help you get on that pole. Or you can try it by yourself. It's a tradition Seward used to have many years ago, and it was a telephone pole. This is 17 feet tall, if anybody's curious. Dollars. 
Imagine a towering pole slathered in slippery grease, and now teams must attempt to reach the envelopes at the top. This event is hilarious and challenging all at once. The cheering crowd brings the energy up to a 10, and it is impossible to not crack up as teams slip and slide in their quest for glory. Amidst all the fun events, the general feel downtown is just festive and fun. We are so used to seeing Seward quiet and sleepy in its winter form, so seeing it bursting with food trucks, bouncy castles, and so many people, it's quite a contrast. So Seward, Alaska is in a full-on partnership with the sea. The local economy is thoroughly tied to maritime industries, tourism, commercial fishing, research. So while most American towns have a 4th of July parade, this town also has a boat parade. Our friends have invited us out on their boat. And what's funny is, when they invited us along, we thought we were just gonna go out and watch the fireworks in the water. We had no idea until we were out on the water that we were going to be part of the boat parade. And now here we are, and it is so much fun. Picture this, a colorful flotilla of boats decked out in patriotic decor cruising along the crowd-filled waterfront with the misty Kenai Mountains as a backdrop. It must be quite a sight to behold from the shore. Out here, it is simply a hoot. The theme this year is Pirates of Resurrection Bay, and everyone has gone all out. If you ever have the opportunity to visit Seward, Alaska, Truly, you must. The community here is just delightful. The night ends with a midnight fireworks show over the chilly waters of Resurrection Bay. Everyone involved with the crowd on the waterfront and the pirates of the boat parade 
all join together in watching a colorful spectacle against the barely nighttime sky. The next day, we are back for more. It's July 4th, and there is a truly epic event in store. Our day starts with the Independence Day Parade. Yep, if you were wondering whether the boat parade takes the place of a traditional 4th of July downtown parade, no. Seward has one of those too. As the streets of Seward burst with people, we join the enthusiastic crowds lying in the sidewalks. The energy today is infectious, and the candy plentiful, much to Anthony's delight. And now for the iconic heart-pounding event of this whole weekend, the Mount Marathon Race. This race is the definition of hardcore. Every year it draws athletes and spectators from across the world for a 5K that is as grueling as it is unbelievable. This is Mount Marathon, whose slope steepness averages 34 degrees. And this is the trail that racers must conquer. About 3.1 miles long, there and back, with an elevation gain of about 2,675 feet in 0.9 miles. It is not a walk in the park. We missed the start of the women's race earlier today, but we're here to watch the start of the men's. After this brief jaunt downtown, racers will hit the dreaded slopes of Mount Marathon. The trail is steep, rocky, and because Seward gets quite a bit of rainfall in the summer, it is muddy. This race is grueling, dangerous, and not for the unprepared. When the racers start coming down the mountain, you will see why. As mentioned, the Mount Marathon race is known across the globe. It became an organized run in 1915 and is believed to be the oldest mountain race in the U.S. We gather here at the trail base to see the racers right at the moment they finish their perilous descent of Mount Marathon. It is not uncommon for racers to come back bruised, bleeding, and absolutely covered in mud by default. They essentially descend the mountain in a controlled freefall, flying over scree fields, loose and fallen rock, shoots of mud, sticks, and stones, even mud slick cliffs. That controlled freefall is the only way one can ascend and descend the Mount Marathon Trail between 45 minutes to 2.5 hours. The current overall record is 41 minutes and 26 seconds. And the standing record for the fastest descent, as in the fastest someone has gone from the top of that trail to the finish line downtown, is 10 minutes. Now if this doesn't endear you to the Alaskan spirit, I don't know what will. Even after ascending and descending a formidable mountain in treacherous conditions, racers still have it in them to embrace the fun side of life and crack us all up on the way down. The scenes at the finish line say it all. 
We don't know about you, but it would take us half the day to climb that trail and make it down in one piece. Just look how fast they did it. Sheer determination, wicked spirit, and a hell-bent sense of adventure characterize these racers and the feat that they just pulled off. Now you may have noticed one common theme across these two days, rain. The eastern side of the Kenai Peninsula tends to be pretty rainy in the summertime, though obviously it doesn't stop the fun. But when it does get to be a little bit too much, Seward has the best rainy day trick up its sleeve, the Alaska Sea Life Center. The Alaska Sea Life Center is unique within Alaska, uniting a public aquarium with marine research, educational initiatives, and wildlife response. While its central mission centers on marine research and education, the Sea Life Center is also the sole permanent marine mammal rehabilitation facility in the state. This is the perfect spot to go for inquisitive minds, no matter how old they might be. These two travelers are soaking it up, learning all about marine mammals and seabirds, and even getting up close with some friendly sea creatures. The touch tank is by far the biggest hit, especially getting to know these curious sea urchins that really do respond to touch just like this. It's hugging me. Oh my God, it's hugging me. It's hugging me. Me. We even catch a glimpse of the life cycle of coho or silver salmon, which is fascinating because in just a couple months, Jose Luis and I will be fishing for silvers right off the beach here in Seward. It is so interesting to learn about the life cycle of salmon. The Sea Life Center is a place to come to gain respect and an appreciation for our beautiful oceans and the creatures that call them home. It also reminds us of the fragility of marine ecosystems and how we are all responsible for doing our part to protect them. And we all owe a debt of gratitude to the researchers and caregivers who run facilities like the Sea Life Center, both focusing on important research and wildlife rehabilitation, while also educating and instilling a sense of stewardship in the next generation. It's cold? Now you know how cold it is. What's he gonna do? You want to go swimming in that water now? Oh. Touch the spectrum. Look at him. Look at him. Touch him. Touch his little. Oh, yeah, yeah, hello. This is the best What's it feel like? Nothing. Yeah. Oh. Any bite? No. That one's called a rose star. A rose yep. star? You want to touch it? Go ahead. Go ahead. You got it. You got this, bro. Squishy? It's been a heck of an Independence Day, but our time here in Seward isn't finished just yet. We've said it before and we'll say it again. You never truly see the beauty of this place until you've seen it from the water. We are now heading out with our friends to experience the breathtaking beauty of Kenai Fjords National Park next time on Art We There Yet. 
Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. Send us a comment below. And for exclusive content and a behind the scenes view of the Art Media journey, join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon.